Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Burley First Christian Church. What a glorious day. I know it's snowing, but I kind of enjoy that. So I'm excited for the snow. I know the kids are excited for the snow. Um, but it is a great day that God has given us, and I'm glad that we are all here to rejoice in it together. If you guys would please pray with me, we'll begin this morning. Lord, we come before you, and we are humbled, and we are thankful for the many ways that you continue to work in and through each and every one of us. Lord, we ask that you would continue to enter into our hearts, that you would be present here this morning, that we would feel and know that presence as we worship you today. Lord, as you continue to guide and lead us into the disciples that you are calling us to be in the church that you have in store for this community. Lord, we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand with us as we um, open up with some, some Christmas hymns. Um, but if you need to sit or... or Kneel, whatever position is comfortable for you to, to praise God, please do so and join us as we sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. season with hope, waiting expectantly for Jesus to come, not just as a baby, but today into our hearts. So we sing our praise and thanksgiving to the Lord for his gracious gifts. Let us sing it came upon the midnight clear. It's in your hymnal 153 or up on your screen.
Exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. For they have, been, they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness' sake. O oh Lord, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his ways. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and his decrees, such as the word of the Lord. this Christmas season. Amen. You may be seated. Faithful and will keep the promises made to us. Our hope comes from God. 
We invite the God of uh, promise to come into our darkness, to renew God's hope in us. We receive God's promise of hope from Psalm 33. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. Uh, he is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His only name. May the God's unfailing love rest upon us as we put our hope in God and come in Christ. Please join us in singing One Candle's Lit, uh, found in uh, 128 in the blue hymnals that we light the candle for hope. come to our time of joys and concerns, and uh, in your bulletin you will find uh, in there a prayers of the people, and then we continue to try to keep this as updated as we possibly can um, with many things that are going on in our church, in the life of uh, the community and stuff. We continue to pray for our community, of course, and maybe be praying for people uh, during this snow as well, because I think there's probably a record two out there. And um, we need uh, everyone to just be very cautious as they drive and being prayer prayerful for all of those who are going to be out and praying that we all get home safely as well. We also want to be praying for our church. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of things continuing to happen. Um, if you haven't seen yet, in the back on um, the entrance to the sanctuary here, we have posted a list of the... Uh, officer candidates and um, elders and deacons and stuff for everyone to view. We're going to be voting on that in January um, to officially vote those people in. Uh, we'll also be voting on our, our budget and everything as well. So those things are posted back there for you to be able to see um, and to review for yourselves. We also um, pray for the people in our congregation though, as well. Um, I know there's lots of things that we are um, being concerned for during this uh, Advent season, this Christmas season. Um, there are plenty of people that, even though this can be a very happy time, that sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes those who have lost loved ones or those that are really sick or going through something that's very hard, it can be almost more difficult when it's the holiday or, you know, the Christmas season and uh, things are happening and you can't be with family or for whatever reason. Um, you were barred from that. And so we want to be praying for all those people, those who are um, have lost loved ones, those who are battling cancer or in need of healing. And you can see a lot of the things that we have listed here that we're continuing to pray for. Um, one thing on here that is new, for sure, that is a joy, is that we have a new baby here with us. And Tish had her, what, um, which day was it? November 29th. November 29th. Um, Josephina, am I getting that right? Um, Josie for short, I think, right? Yeah. Um, she was born, I think you said, what did you say, seven and a half ounces? Or seven pound? Pounds, seven, two ounces. seven pounds, two ounces. There we go. Okay, I'll get this down. Um, so it's awesome to to be able to share in that joy with you guys. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. There's a picture. So awesome. So awesome. Um, but we also open this time up for anyone who has something to add to this as well, and I can see a hand already raised back there. Go ahead. I couldn't hear. Oh, yeah, four teeth pulled out. Okay, well, we'll be praying for that, okay? You have one, turn. You have teeth, too? He still has his baby teeth. Still has her baby teeth. All right, well, that's okay. So does, so does Jackson, so does a lot of people, so that's okay. Yeah, I know. Everybody's just getting teeth pulled out and grown in, and that's awesome. So we're praying for that. Um, are there any others? Mike, you have one? Uh, I, I, uh, 
I got my new contact lens for my cornea transplant eye. Mm -hmm. I can only see 2060 without the lens. With, with the lens, I can see 2040. And up close, I can see about 2020. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't wear it this morning, but I'm going to wear it this afternoon. I'm only supposed to wear it six hours today. So oh, I'm okay. Not, I thought I'd wear it when the football games are on. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Amen. <laughs> awesome. Okay, yeah. No, I didn't actually do that. Oh my gosh. Okay. But she fell and hurt her hip? Oh, broke her hip. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought you said hurt. Okay, broke. Okay. So far, it's still a part of you? Okay. Yeah, I just, I guess I just didn't hear that. I, um, okay, well, it's good to know. We'll be praying for her as well. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I just didn't know. It's not a big deal. Um, are there any others? Yeah. Okay, she will be eligible for surgery. Okay, awesome. Grant. Oh, Grant. Grant Coyle. Okay. Oh. Grant Coyle on hospice. Okay. Hmm. Well, cancer I, doesn't have an age. I know, it's hard. Yes, Judy. Probably been an alcoholic for a little while then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's really quick. Okay. Okay. Do you know what the son's name is? Evan Bathauer. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll just put Evan on here. Yeah. We all know it's not this Evan, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for the rest of the family as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not even his grandparents knew about it. Ken, did you have one? Oh, my neighbor's <coughs> cancer. Your neighbor has cancer? Okay. Yeah. I just want to look up our holiday bazaar on oh. Saturday that it can be a light and a lot of people know about it and it would actually come. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely praying for that event and um Yeah, and we, we you know if you if you can come and help as well, we I know that uh, we will we will definitely can use the help. Um we might even, if, if any of the kids want to come too, we might even, I might be speaking a little bit out of turn for Bethany here, but we might be making some cookies for you to decorate as well for the kids. So we're trying to kind of organize that up. We were talking about it last night. So, um, But if you guys can come and help, that'd be great as well. But yeah, definitely be praying for that event um, and for all the things coming up. You know, the, the other thing is we're, we're continuing to pray for each Sunday as well because during this kind of a season, family visit, um, people tend to go to church when they don't maybe don't normally go. And so 
um, just being in prayer for ourselves as we as we are ready and willing to welcome anybody that walks through those doors as well. So all of those things that I'm continuing to be praying for, too. Um, there's one other thing, if nobody else has done, or anybody else has anything, um, I wanted to share one joy as well. Um, Bethany is pregnant. So, Bethany is. We're going to have a baby who is due, we're not going to find out the gender, um, due on the 3rd of June. So, yes. Um, well, we don't know. We don't know. Everyone's telling me one thing or another. Somebody's telling me it's going to have to be a boy. It's going to be a girl. I don't know. But we are excited. So um, maybe maybe with that, also asking just for prayers for health and all the good things. So um, be involved in that. So. Um, are there any others, though? Before we go ahead and pray together. Okay. If you guys would please join me in prayer. Lord, we come before you. We are, we are happy. We are thankful. We are uh, joyful in, in all the things that you continue to reach into our lives and, and, and help us experience the blessings, the amazing things in life, Lord. Um, whether that's new additions to family or, or um, uh, you know, praise for, for things beginning to heal or work. Um, there's so many great things that we get to recognize and see happen, um, especially during the holiday season that can sometimes be very hard. Because, Lord, we also know, as we want to lift up um, this list and the things that have been spoken aloud and the things written on our hearts, we also know that there are many things that are hard to walk through um, in normal daily life, but it seems to be amplified sometimes when we come to this, um, this kind of time between Thanksgiving and Christmas and, and even into New Year where we have memories of people that maybe we've lost or we're not able to do things that we've always been able to do, and it begins to make that, that season hard. So Lord, we pray for all these people. We pray for those who um, are having to endure surgeries, or those that are having to um, heal from surgeries, or whatever it might be, Lord, that, um, that we're going through. You know all the things that we've talked about, um, those who are entering hospice, and those who um, are entering a process of, of coming back from addictions or those who are healing um, physically or mentally or emotionally, Lord. We just want to be lifting all of these people up, especially during this time, and, and just reaching out to them, Lord. We want to be prayer warriors for all these that we know and love. We pray as those who have gathered together here. We pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you want to just come up, you can yeah. take a picture of the Yes, I can take a picture really quick. Um... Well, I think I can. <laughs> My phone is somewhere. You should get a picture of everybody, too. Yeah. yeah. You got it? Oh, there you go. Okay, everyone smile. Let me get a shot of everybody too. Everyone else smile too. <laughs> you know, while she's taking this picture, I'm reminded that um, we've invited somebody to come and actually take pictures for our directory. On the 16th, we're going to do our Christmas party. Um, it's going to be like a potluck and white elephant gift exchange. Um, you may have seen the slide up above. It's also in your bulletin. And so we're also going to um, have some like family pictures kind of taken. 
so that we can do the bull, uh, excuse me, I think I said bulletin, I meant directory, if I said bulletin. Um, we're gonna begin to create a directory um, with pictures and stuff. So please come um, and, and be ready for that to happen as well. But at this time, um, Jesus said, let the children come unto me, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. So guys, be very careful around the candles. Jesus loves me. Guys, do you guys know what today is at all? Today we're talking about hope. Today is not Christmas yet. We got a little bit. Hold on, hold on. It's the second day of December. That's right. And we're going through a season we call Advent. And what? He wants. Hold on. Just sit down, okay? Sit down. Um, you guys, we're going through the season of Advent. You guys see that up there? It says says hope, doesn't it? Up on the screen, it says hope. And you can see it up there. Yeah, that's right. It says hope because we're talking about hope today. And did you know, do you guys remember the Christmas story a little bit? Where um, where do you think that Jesus was born? Oh, that's good. Bethlehem, you are right. But what about, I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking. Um, who said, what did you, did you say it? What did you say? A stable. Okay. So when we, I know, well, you're, you're both on track. What am I looking at? The baby? Sit down, sit down. Um, <laughs> I got to refocus my brain here. Okay. Um, so did you guys also see up there, we have a little manger scene, right? You see there, there's kind of, they look like they're in some kind of a barn thing. Right, and there's there's an angel in there, and there's shepherds, and there's kings, and there's sit down, sit down. There's kings, and there's Mary and Joseph and Jesus. Right, guys, focus, focus a second. One of the things that that we I want to talk about today is um, we we talk often about this concept of house of the Lord. Have you guys heard that term before? House of the Lord. Sometimes we call like our building, like the church, house of the Lord, don't we? You guys ever heard that before? Um, in scripture, it talks about house of the Lord. They called the, the temple the house of the Lord, right? The scripture also calls us house of the Lord. Yes, I know. Sit down. I know. The lights are really cool. Um, but Jesus was born. Um, Jesus was not born in like a temple, right? He wasn't born in some because we call him king, right? But he wasn't born in like a castle or he wasn't born in some kind of palace, was he? He was born in like really, really low, low grade stuff, right? In fact, it says that they laid him in a manger. They laid him in a manger, which is a feeding trough. It's like where animals eat. That's where they put him, right? They didn't put it, they didn't have a baby basket thing, right? They didn't have a, a cool little carrier like we have for Josephine over there. They didn't have those kind of things, right? Because there, there was, it, hey, Jackson, no. The Bible tells us that there was no room for them in the inn for them to stay. So they had to find whatever they could, right? But what's interesting is that Jesus is at home everywhere, right? Jesus doesn't need a fancy place. He doesn't need a cool building like this church. Jesus can be at home anywhere that we are at, and he can be home at home within us, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I hopefully you guys got that. Let me, um, one other thing I want to tell you guys. You guys see this right here? Can you, you guys all see the front of the bulletin, right? Do you guys know who did this? Yeah. Brianna did that. Did you guys know that we're doing a competition? Yeah, we're doing a competition, and all of you guys get an opportunity to have your picture on the front of the bulletin. And you will get a prize, and you get the picture on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass out to you guys. Everybody can have one. This is the contest for next week, and the theme for next week is peace. So everybody who wants to do it, get one, 
and then what, draw your best picture you can about peace. You want one too? And then you guys get it to me, okay? If you want to do it. You want to do it too? I can make some more copies, okay? Okay. So we'll do that. <laughs> it's okay. Um, and then you guys, maybe you guys can get your picture on here, and you also get a prize if you do, okay? So let's go ahead and pray. You guys, can you guys pray with me, and then we can have a piece of candy? Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for giving us hope, hope that Jesus can be with us, that he can be at home anywhere that we are and everywhere that we are. We thank you for all of our kids and this Advent season as we wait upon Christmas that's coming. We're so excited. We just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Come get a piece of candy. Just pick one. to our time of communion. And it is, once again, a time where we are purposefully gathering together. Um, one of the things that Jesus asked us to do is to do this meal in remembrance of him when we gather. It's interesting that we do a meal, you know, when, whenever we do, especially church events, right, they're very famous for having like a potluck or some kind of a meal. Um, but even if you think about it, when we're dating, what do we usually do? Will we go out to eat? When we go to see friends, what do we do? We go to eat. We invite people over to our homes for dinner. The table is a place where people grow in their relationships, where they come together. When you share a meal together, there's something special that kind of happens. And Jesus invited us to do that, to come together, to share in this, in this meal, not only with each other, but with him, to commune with him. And so I invite each and every one of you to prepare your hearts and your minds this morning um, as people who are pursuing him. We are all welcome to this table together. Will you please join me in our confession of faith? It's printed above and also in your bulletin. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and my personal Savior and Lord. Let us pray. Loving God in Christ Jesus, with gratitude for your holy nourishment about this table, we dedicate our lips to be the hopeful voice of Christ to its despairing, our hands to reach out in Christ's name to heal the broken, our feet to walk with Christ to visit those who are shunned, our bodies to be Christ's living sacrifice to break the power of death. Take us, empower us, use us. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave, gave thanks and he broke it and blessed it, saying, this is my body that has been broken for you. Eat of it all of you in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that has been poured out for the forgiveness of sin. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do proclaim my death until I come again. And so we're all invited to partake in this meal together.
Now we come to our time of offering. And, you know, gift giving is something that is uh, deep entrenched around this time of the year. That, you know, we often say that it is better to give than it is to receive. And that's actually, in some ways, scientifically very true. That when we give, it releases um, oxytocin and, and, and different things in our body that actually make it feel good to give. Especially when we see someone's reaction to that gift. And it's just interesting that God designed us that way. God designed us to be generous people, to be people who give. And so I just simply invite you to give as God is calling you to give today. Not anything more or anything less, as we always say, but to give as God is calling you to give. And to give generously and joy joyfully. Well, um, if you're new, please let the plate pass you by. I'm going to ask any of you. We're simply glad that you're here and worshiping with us. Will the deacons please receive this morning's offering? pray. God of all the earth and of the universe, although our offerings are sums of substance, we ourselves are the gifts you desire. Unfold our hopes. Open us up to service. Use us well. Magnify our giving as we rejoice in your gracious presence among us. In the name of the one who was born, Emmanuel, amen. 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 You may be seated. As always, I invite you to grab your Bible. If you don't have one, there should be some around you. And if you don't own one, take it home with you. It's our gift to you. So grab that Bible and repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. God's word written for me. God's word written for me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. Within these pages, Within these pages I will find strength, peace, and love. I will find strength, peace, and love. Today I will be taught the word of God. Today I will be taught the word of God. So I boldly and fearlessly confess. So I boldly and fearlessly confess. My mind is prepared. My mind is prepared. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. And I will be changed from the inside out. I'm about to receive the everlasting, the unchanging, and the ever living Word of God. And I declare that I will not be the same. Amen. So I go ahead and open in prayer. You can open uh, your Bible to Luke, um, one of the four Gospels in the beginning of the New Testament there. Luke chapter 21 is where we will be looking. Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Please let flow your words for your glory and for your purpose. I ask the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Advent season is here, as you haven't, as you may have may or not have noticed yet. Um, Advent is here. It's this season of of preparation. Um, in fact, if if the word Advent is confusing to you, I wanted to just quickly kind of give you some definition. Um, I, if you were to Google it, this is what you would get, right? This would pop up. It just basically says, Advent means the, the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. It's this arrival of something important, right? This Maybe it's a person or it's an event or some kind of thing that is coming that is of note. Um, the example they put on there actually is the advent of television, which obviously was very important for us, right? 
Um, that is the example that they have there on, on Google. But, um, but some of the synonyms kind of help get, get this in your head a little bit. Advent is uh, a synonym to arrival or appearance, right? Emergence, this ma um, materialization or occurrence, dawn, birth, right? Rise, development. These are all some synonyms to this word Advent. And so we call this the Advent season because we're preparing for the recognition of Christ's birth as in Advent. We're also anticipating, though, this second coming of Christ as an Advent as well. So we're kind of dual-purposing, um, at least dual-purposing in that way, that we're talking about Advent as the season of preparation for the coming of something that's very notable, that's important to us, and that's Christ. And hope is a huge piece of all of this, right? Imagine the hope that was building in Israel before the birth of Jesus. I mean, it, it's hard to, for us in our context to kind of get ourselves there, but if you can imagine the hope of those people, you know, they're being ruled and occupied by the Roman Empire after having been ruled and occupied by multiple, multiple other empires, and, um, and, and it's this hope that God had given them. If you read Isaiah 7.14, it's one that's often used um, during this season as well, but it says, therefore the Lord himself gave you, will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. It's almost chilling to see this in, um, in Isaiah. You know, when, when they're in, uh, many of the people are in exile and, and trying to, they're like, God, you know, we, how come you've left us and we need to be redeemed and all these things. And so he gives them this decree, and if you read further in that, you, it's basically saying that when this child comes, God will or God will bring salvation to God's people. He's giving them this sign. Um, the people knew that this was a hope that they could count on, right? God had given them this hope that eventually a child would be born who would be this Messiah, this Savior for the people. So they hoped on it, and they knew that they could count on this hope because their experience was that God fulfilled his promises, right? If, you, if we read back to the Old Testament, you'll see time and time again God promising something and following through with it, right? God established this covenant with Abraham, and he greatly increased his numbers so that he became the father of many nations, right? You can read that in Genesis 17, or the Lord also took the Israelites as his own people and he became their God, and he brought them out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. He, he brought them out from underneath Pharaoh's rule, and he, he delivered them out of Egypt, right? And eventually into the Promised Land. And you can read all about that through Exodus. In Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? And then in, in Joshua chapter 21, it says, So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their forefathers, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their forefathers. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord handed all their enemies over to them, not one of all the Lord's enemies good promises to the house of Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. So the Israelites' experience with God's promises is that he was a God who fulfilled his promises. Right? They had no reason to doubt God. In fact, every time they did doubt God, um, they were inadvertently sort of punished for it. Right? They uh, we, we talked uh, a, a few weeks back about even when the Israelites had just been, they they just witnessed God deliver them out of Egypt, and it had only been a couple of months, and God had, God had poured water out of a rock. He had made manna fall from heaven for them to be able to eat. Like, he had just continued to provide. He was present with them in this um, pillar of smoke and fire and all this stuff, and, and as soon as, as, soon as uh, Moses, almost said Noah, <laughs> As soon as Moses goes up onto the mountaintop with God, all of a sudden they're like, well, what do we do now? Let's make a golden calf and worship that. And they immediately understand that that's not the way that it should be. They, they, they 
they failed to, to remember God even, even within a couple of days. It was amazing. So they, they have seen God fulfill his promises, and they have seen what happens when they abandon their piece of a promise. And so when, when we see in Isaiah, and, he, and, and God says that the Lord himself will give you a sign, look, that the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, and that that son will be the salvation of the Israelites and the people. They, they believed on that promise. They could put their hope in that promise. So when, when God's promising this Messiah, they believed God. They had no reason not to. In fact, they had every reason to believe in God and not to not believe in God, if that makes sense. So now they've just been waiting. They've just been waiting for this promise to be fulfilled. They don't really know when it's going to happen. They had hoped, obviously, it would have happened much sooner, but they don't know what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. And um, the anticipation, especially as the Roman Empire had come in and was um, completely taking over, the anticipation was probably very, you know, you could almost feel it in the air as palpable. The Israelites were continually just crying out for a Savior. They'd also been scattered, if you remember, multiple times because of being exiled from their own land, other people coming in and pushing them out. And so you have Israelites all over the place. Um, and, and so people from other nations would have even known that the Israelites were waiting on their God to bring this Messiah. Right? This wouldn't have been just known within the Israelite circle, but other people would have known. They would have shared about this and said, well, you might have won right now, but it won't last for long because we got a Messiah coming, right? Um, this would have been known by other nations. And if you read Jeremiah 23, 5 through 6, it says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will ra raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our Righteousness. This is why so many people had hope in a coming Messiah. They were just anticipating and waiting for it to happen. Now with Jesus' birth, that hope was fulfilled. That hope was fulfilled. They were able to hope with the anticipation that God was going to fulfill this promise. Jesus is born and that hope is fulfilled. God kept his promise by bringing Jesus. He brought the Messiah who saves people from something greater than just the oppression of these countries and these nations that have been coming. Um, but Jesus saves from the oppression of sin and death, which, which ultimately is greater than any other um, saving that he could have done. Now there's another hope we get to live in to today, that Jesus will come into our hearts, right? That Jesus will be present with us today. It's a hope we can both anticipate but also see fulfilled. This is, let me read to you Paul's prayer to those in Ephesus. This is from Ephesians chapter 3. He says, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. As you are being rooted and grounded in love, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be fulfilled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus promises to bring this the, the, the Holy Spirit into our hearts as believers while he is sort of physically absent, right? He goes up to be with God. He says, I'm going to have this the Holy Spirit as an advocate for you. In fact, John 14, um, verse 15, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. This is Jesus talking. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you 
another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Jesus is saying, he's promising to be with us. Even if it is through the Holy Spirit, he's saying, you, I am in you and you are in me. When you love me, when you follow my command, when you are following me, I am in you and you are in me. That he will dwell in us. This is a promise that we can anticipate and that we can see fulfilled. There's examples of this being fulfilled, and it happening all around us, um, even in our own church, right? We we get to see things, amazing things happen, like when we just did the Syringa dinner. In fact, I forgot to mention, but in the back there on the on the window, um, you'll see a thank you note that they sent to us, and everybody signed it. It's awesome. But we got to be the hands and feet of Jesus to those people and just love on them, serve them a meal. And just be there when some of their family will not even be there. But there's other examples, right? We, we, we've supported many families. Families in our church, out of our church, in our community. We participate in the food giveaways that impact hundreds of families in this community. We helped 10 widows in the DR Congo start their own businesses, and completely turn their lives around, be able to afford to be able to support their family and even their grandchildren. It's an amazing thing that we were able to help with. Even loving on every person that walks in those doors. These are all ways that we get to see the promise of Christ in us fulfilled. That when we love God and when we love others, that is Jesus being present in us. What we also get to have hope in is this season that we now have this other promise from God. See, when I read, I'm going to read to you Luke um, 21 really quick. It just says, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, the stress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and for <clears throat> excuse me, foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. He said, look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, I share that with you not to be all apocalyptic and everything, but to say that that is a promise, that he is coming again, that we can anticipate Christ coming again. It's a hope that we can rest on, knowing that no matter what happens here, 
um, we get to have hope in Jesus. No matter how bad the world gets or what happens here or what um, pulls us in whatever direction or, or how bad our lives go or you know, whatever other influences, we know that we can have hope in Jesus. Jesus himself tells us that he will be coming again. It's this hope of the second coming, or maybe based on what I've shared with you, maybe you could even call it this sort of third coming in this conversation, right? That, that Jesus came as, as a child, and we celebrate that this season. But we can also anticipate and celebrate Jesus coming into us. Maybe that's a second coming, and a third coming being that he will come again, even though we call that the second coming a lot. But we're called to be living with Jesus in us now, today. And as we do this, we will be living in the hope of Jesus coming again. Right? Not only will we be living in that hope, but we will be an example for others. Just as we did things like the Syringa dinner and all the things that we do. We can be an example of hope for others as well. And we can spread this hope because and through the love that we show and, and share with others. Because that's when we are being the hands and the feet of Christ. Amen? At this time, I'd like to invite um, anyone who wants to come forward and join this congregation, transfer membership, or, or accept Christ into your life. You can do so during our, our closing song. Um, but we, we anticipate and we celebrate the hope of Christ this season. Will you please um, stand and sing with us as we're going to. that you give us, the hope that we um, have seen fulfilled, Lord, the hope that we get to anticipate, but also the hope that we get to celebrate, Lord. We are thankful for your presence and your grace and your mercy in our lives, and we are excited for what is to come because we know that we can trust and hope in you, the God who fulfills his promises time and time again. And so we thank you, Lord. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Um, please take a moment also and just look in your bulletins at the announcements. There's a lot of things coming up here in December, um, and you're invited to participate in it all. Um, we also had some slides going and stuff too, but also keep in mind um, our Christmas Eve service will be at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve, which is the 24th, which is Monday night. So, blessings, and please drive safely. I know that there's a lot of fresh snow out there, so...